what's up guys welcome back to another video this is a reaction to 10 things that will shock you in the usa these videos are always good fun to do i mean just seeing these differences is always interesting and i think she's a brit or she's english the english coach so i assume in that case she is english um and yeah so from her perspective from someone who's from the same country as me it's going to be interesting to see the things that she was shocked by that i guess i would be shocked by too but yeah links are also in the description to my patreon where you can see reactions that i can't post to youtube movies tv series all stuff like that links are there for those who want to see that but let's check this out and see these things that will supposedly shock me hey guys what's up stephanie the english coach here from englishfulltime.com in oh then she's american okay that's interesting i mean it's still the same premise but i guess she just knows things that will confuse people around the world in this video we are going to talk about 10 things that will shock you about the usa now some of you have never been to the usa before but others of you live here and i am from the usa so all of this stuff is completely normal to me but when i talk with my friends and people that i know that traveled and visited the usa for the first time they go, oh my gosh, Stephanie, I experienced so much culture shock. There were so many things that were different from where I'm from. So that's what I wanna to talk to you guys about in this video today. Now, a lot of this stuff is actually gonna be about observations that my husband made because he is from Argentina originally. And oh. when he came to the USA for the first time four years ago, he made some really interesting and funny observations. So I wanna share that with you guys. And in another video, I'll tell you about some of the observations I made in Argentina about how that country and culture was different from what I knew in the USA, okay? Now, before we get started, I just wanna let you guys know that you can also find me on Instagram, Facebook, and on my website, of course. So I will include the links in the description of 10 things that will shock you in the USA. Toilet paper. I know this sounds really silly and crazy, but when my husband came here, Toilet paper. one of the first places we went was to my sister's house. And I remember he came out of the bathroom and he was like, Oh my gosh, the toilet paper was so soft. It was like a blanket. And I was just looking at him like, okay. Like to me, that was just normal. I and mean, the thing is like, for example, when you're flying, the airport toilet paper is the worst thing in the world. It's literally like sandpaper. And I'm someone who, I use a toilet probably a bit more than your average Joe. <laughs> so... I can definitely see, like, if maybe he's just used to just solely having terrible toilet paper. I mean, in the UK, you have options. You can have soft toilet paper or tougher one that will cost, like, 10p per roll. But the consequence is it's not very nice to use. <laughs> but I guess maybe in the US, it's just even softer. I don't know how you can make it even softer, but I assume that's probably the case. It's a funny observation to make, though. Just, just just so happy about the the softness of the toilet paper and then i thought about it and i was like yeah you know when we were in argentina the toilet paper wasn't as thick i guess okay but in the u.s we actually have a couple words for the kind of toilet paper that we use because a lot of it is really soft i mean depending on how much money you spend on your toilet paper or what brand you get or what quality you want you can get like really cheap thin toilet paper or you can get the other kind that's so thick and it's like a blanket okay thick? so the kind okay. that's like a blanket we call it quilted okay a quilt is a type of blanket you can google a picture of that if you want to see what quilts look like but basically they call it quilted toilet paper or they might call it something like two ply two ply just means that there are actually two pieces of paper that are put together um, to make that toilet paper extra soft okay all right the next thing that will probably shock you about the usa is that the food here is extremely sweet now this is not a good thing in my opinion because it just means that there's a ton of sugar and unnatural products used in our food to sweeten the food but again my husband made this observation when he came here he made a sandwich he bit into his sandwich and he was just like whoa why is this bread sweet like it almost tasted like dessert to him or something but it was actually marketed as regular sandwich bread right and you you don't really normally think of bread that you use for sandwiches as being sweet but 
Anyhow, that's one of the problems he has with the bread here is that it's completely sweet. And you'll just notice that in all kinds of food too. It's not just bread, it's also meat. It's also the sauce we put on our food dishes. They're just, there's just so much sugar in the food. And also there's a lot of obesity in the USA. So that's not even- I mean, to be fair, I feel like the UK sauces, for example, barbecue sauce that I use, it's always somewhat sweet. I ain't complaining, I love it. It's just, I guess, I just don't use it very often. I would just use it for specific meals, aka when I'm having like chips or, or fries or burgers. I love barbecue sauce burgers, I can't lie. But other than that, do I really use barbecue sauce for anything? Maybe for like, if I have every once, every two months, I'll make sausage and egg muffins in the morning or something like that, and I'll have it on with, with that or something. But other than that, don't use it too much. So I just use it and enjoy it when I do. It's sweet as hell, but it's good. It makes it tasty. Even on the list, but that's another thing that might shock you when you come here and you see the size of people. Okay, the next thing that will probably shock you about the USA is that the cars here, there's such a variety, okay? You can go down the street and see a Corvette here, a really unique car there. Okay, I just, okay. full disclaimer, I'm not a car person. I don't know the name of names of cars. I'm like a Corvette, a Mustang, but the way I talk about cars, I'm like, oh, that's a cute blue car. That's a really awesome red car. The way I distinguish cars is if it's a van or a pickup or a, like a four door car, a sports car, that's kind of like my terminology for cars is limited. But if you're a person that's really into cars, you're gonna love driving down the freeway and seeing all the different cars that are here, okay? Because there's just such a huge variety. And I remember when I went to Argentina and I was like, okay, so there's like five kinds of cars here. <laughs> I mean, there's more than that, but because I was so used to seeing such a wide variety here in the USA, when I went to Argentina, it just seemed like everything was all the same, okay? So I don't mean any offense by that, obviously. These are just <laughs> observations. Next, number five, in the USA, you can do almost anything over the phone. You can make an appointment, book an appointment, you know, call a store and make a request, put an order in, ask about something or send an email. But it's more common to just book things online. Like you can get a pizza delivered to your door just by requesting one online. You don't even have to call anymore. But Same in the UK. The reason why I'm saying this is because in so many countries that I've traveled to, if you want to talk with a banker or something like that, you actually have to go to the bank, really? stand in line, wait your turn, ask your question, talk to the person about it, get the information that you need, and then you go home. In the US- That is brutal. Still, when was this video made? Because surely it's changed even. I mean, so, there we, oh, it's, this is six years ago. So I feel like maybe a lot has changed in that time because things just change so quick. But that's the thing that fully in the UK now, fully integrated in the UK, all these options for things and stuff. We just don't want to waste any time going anywhere and asking questions when we can just, you know, use the technology that we have to get the information that we need. Okay, number six, the next thing that might shock you about the USA is that a lot of the bathrooms here are automated. I mean, what? everything is automated. automated. The toilet flushes on its own. You have to put your hand under the soap dispenser and it will pop out a little. This, see, this is like an airport thing again, and I hate this stuff. Not really the toilet one as much, but like when you try, I think, so the, the, in the airports I went to, you have soap, water, and the dryer all next to each other. And you get, obviously, the soap first, you wash it. That's always all fine and dandy. And then you try and do the water, and the water, even if it doesn't come out, or it comes in small spurts and it just washes like 2% of the, the soap off and you have to just keep doing it until you've just got about 80% of it off and you're like, you know what, fuck this, I'm just gonna get the, the, like a towel to just dry it off at the end. And then the dryer just barely works as well. <laughs> but I guess she means just in general it's like this. Yeah, it's definitely not that in general, it's not like that in, the, in general in the UK. You'll find places where you'll have these, these things, but dryers definitely are. Dryers are always automated. I mean, that's just how they are really. But I'm trying to think. In my gym, they're not. In restaurants, they're not, realistically. So, yeah. A little bit of soap for you. Then you wash your hands. And then you put your hands under the faucet. And then the water comes on automatically. And then you can either put your hands in a drying machine. Yeah. 
I know what you mean. What are these called? Hand dryers? I know what okay, you Okay, you can put your hands in one of those or under one, and it's all automated. It's like you don't have to touch anything. And I hate the ones that have time limits. In my, in the cinema, in the cinema, my local cinema, there's a dryer that's like, it turns off every 10 seconds. And after the 10 seconds, your hands are still fully wet. It's like, this 10 seconds has not done the job. So you've got to do another 10 seconds, and then even then you're not fully dried. <laughs> It doesn't matter that much, but it's just these small things. And maybe that just represents that in our culture we're germaphobes. <laughs> I don't know. Or maybe people are just, you know, trying to be more hygienic. But this is really interesting, although it can be frustrating when something's not working because you're like, what's wrong with the machine? You're putting your hand in, you're putting it out, you're putting it in, you're putting it out. And then as soon as you take it out, then the soap falls, but it doesn't <laughs> fall on your hand. So it can be really frustrating. And I guess I'm gonna have to talk a lot about Ren in this video, my husband, because he's just the one that, you know, shared all these observations with me and gave me these funny stories. But the first time he used a bathroom like that and realized that he could just wave his hand in front of one of the machines that, that would roll out the paper towel for him to dry his hands, he was just like, whoa, so cool. Now I know there are plenty of countries around the world that are also, you know, advanced in this department, but Plenty of them aren't, okay? So some of you guys might find this very interesting. And if you visit the USA and it's not like this in your country, then you'll probably find it shocking. Okay, number seven, something else that will shock you about the USA is our measuring system. Our system frustrates so many people around the world because we measure length in stuff like feet and inches and then we use Fahrenheit and it's just so confusing because the rest of the world is using the metric system which it's a great system you know you, you base it on the number 10 everything's really easy to understand and in the US we're still stuck on this other system if you grow up with our system it's perfect it makes sense it's great and for us when we travel to your country and you're on the metric system we're like no I don't understand but the same thing happens to you when you come over here and you're just like, okay, it's gonna be 80 degrees today. Well, is that hot? Is that cold? What does 80 degrees even feel like, right? Because you're used to maybe 40 degrees Celsius being really hot. Anyways, number eight, another thing that will- 30 degrees Celsius is really hot, I'll have you know. 25 degrees Celsius is pretty hot um, for me. 40 degrees Celsius is like a cooker, mate. That's like a sauna. No, thank you. I know what she's saying. I'll probably shock you about the USA is just the sheer amount of multicultural people that we have living here. There are just so many people living here from. Again, I think the UK is probably very comparable with this. My city, especially not especially, but as well as as well as the UK. So I guess maybe Argentina. I feel like Argentina is very non multicultural. I don't know what the word is for that. I can't lie. Um, but yeah, so I guess this is from her, her, her from her husband's perspective. It makes sense. But. From all over the world, and in fact, this is one of the reasons why you can live in the USA and almost never have to speak English, because there are subcultures that have formed within the community for <clears throat> Russian speakers, for Spanish speakers, for Chinese speakers, and there are stores that are owned by people of these nationalities and you can go to these stores and you can buy you know the Russian food that you're used to buying yeah. where you live or the Mexican food or whatever it is and you can talk with them in your language and you can do so many things without needing English also if you ever make calls on an automated phone system they might ask you oh do you want this call in a different language if you want it in Spanish press 2 if you want it in this language press this or whatever that's pretty interesting that's not a thing here I guess it really shows just how many Spanish speakers there really are in the US. I knew that, but having that as an option is pretty fascinating. So we have just a lot of people here living from so many different cultures. And um, some of my students, they say, hey, Stephanie, I'm going to the USA, but I'm gonna try my best to avoid Brazilians because I'm, I'm going there to practice English, or I'm gonna try to avoid Spanish speakers, French speakers, whatever it is, because I don't want to speak my language. I'm going to the USA to practice English. Since there are so many people here from different cultures, if someone sees that you're here trying to speak English and practice, but they can hear your accent, and they're like, oh, they speak Spanish, so do I, they might just speak to you in Spanish because it's easier. And you might get frustrated and go, no, I don't want to speak Spanish. I'm here to practice my English. So anyhow, if that happens, just, you know, stick with English and say, no, it's okay. I'm here to practice my English and they'll change back for you. 
Okay, number nine, traffic laws in the USA are very strict. And when I say very strict, okay. I mean you better know what the laws are before you start driving on the streets so you don't get a ticket, okay? You have to stop fully at the stop sign, wait three seconds before you start going. You can't tailgate people, you can't drive too closely, you can't roll up slowly to a stoplight just because it's red and you're trying to save momentum in your car. I mean, that's what my husband does. And I'm like, no, what? just drive up to the stoplight, stop, okay, wait. And oh, then when wow. it's green, then you can go. Damn. He's like, but if that's not fuel efficient. I'm like, hey, you know what? Like, we can't. We can. You just have to follow the rules. You just have what to drive how people drive here. And I know in other countries, because I've been to plenty of them, that people drive differently all over the world. Some of you guys drive really crazy. Malta, mate. I've never been somewhere where there's such chaotic driving in my life. Okay. But in the U.S., just take it slowly. Be calm. There will be that crazy guy every now and then that'll cut you off or whatever, but don't give him the middle finger unless you want to practice your curse words in English, you know? <laughs> but just take it slowly. Know that the traffic laws here are really strict and just read up on what they are before you come. Okay, the last thing that will probably shock you in the USA is that everything is big. Things are just big here. I mean, the country itself is pretty big, right? It's pretty enormous. The people, we already talked about it. We've got our obesity problem, so some of us are big also. Cars are bigger. The lanes that the cars drive in, the roads are bigger. Food portions are enormous. They're like offensive, practically. You go out somewhere for lunch and they give offensive. you enough food for like three people. Everything is just really big in the USA. From the cars, the lanes, the houses, the people, the the land itself, you'll just notice that quantities and portions are large. So anyhow, what I wanna know from you guys now is, have you ever been to the USA? And if you have, how was it different from your country? How are things done differently? How are the people different? What did you like? What did you not like? Okay, feel free to share your Well, there we go. I mean, this is pretty interesting to see, like the traffic ones and stuff are pretty wild. But like, why am I even watching this? I'm from the US. The only thing that shocked me in the US was that if someone told you they would call you back later, you should not take it seriously. Yeah, that's that's a, a British thing as well. The most incredible thing is to be able to drink water directly from the tap. What? Wait, New York has the best tap water? I was not expecting that. I guess this is someone from somewhere where they can't drink tap water, maybe. Which is fair enough. That is a blessing, honestly. That's a big blessing. I still distill my water, but it is a blessing big time. Um, not distill. What's not distill? I filter my water. So not as not as rigorous as that. Because that takes ages. But hopefully you enjoyed this reaction. Let me know your thoughts on this. Do you agree with these shocks? Do you disagree? Um, and yeah, until next time, like, subscribe and peace.